What's up, everybody, man? Back to a brand new video, and today, get ready for another segment of my interview with Matt Frank. In this one, we break down his relationship with art, talking about how he started out, all the way up until his involvement working on Godzilla comics. Hope you enjoy. Now the next question is, where'd your relationship with art begin? So the thing is about drawing that I often tell people is people often tell me, oh man, how long have you been drawing for? And I'm like, since I was a child, like I'm a little teeny tiny baby. And, um, and it's because a lot of people start drawing when they're kids, you know, and because as a kid, drawing is just something for you to do. It keeps you off the street, as I often say. It just gives you something to do with your little hands. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I and of course, all I wanted to draw were dinosaurs and Sonic the Hedgehog and Power Rangers and of course, Godzilla as well. And that's really how it started. But it wasn't until high school when I found out that drawing could be a career because I really started studying manga and anime and stuff. And that was what really appealed to me. And I was like, oh man, I can be a creative person full time and just kind of dedicate my life to it. And that's kind of where that's where my head's at, you know? Yeah. So I guess transitioning from that how did you get into comics how'd you start working with comics uh comics were like yeah like i wanted to do my own comics in high school and into college and i wasn't exactly sure how i was going to go about it but i was starting to learn how you got jobs but i was in college at the time when everything was transitioning online and everything was going remote. Because it used to be back in the 70s, the 60s, and 70s, and heck, ever since comics started, you used to have to either go and meet someone in person and have like an interview, or you had to physically mail your work to the publishing company to try to get a job. Or you go to a convention and you go find a portfolio review at a convention in order to get jobs. That was how it went for a long time. And, and now, of course, or as, as I transitioned into college, it was much easier because you could just fire your stuff off in an email if a company was hiring. You know, IDW, for example, they were having open, they said, if you want to send your work in to be a review, go ahead and send it into this email. Before that, of course, I actually had been headhunted by a couple of different publishers and different companies, people who found my work on DeviantArt and stuff and were like, oh, I like how this, I like what this guy's doing. And they would hire me to do some stuff. But uh, yeah, that's it. And that's How'd the process go from there to working on Godzilla comics? That was interesting because at the time I wasn't really working on comics. I did a couple of Transformers comics for IDW, but not very many, not enough to really kind of earn a spot with them as a regular artist. But behind the scenes at IDW, Chris Mowry, who was the former creative consultant on Godzilla, he was also a designer and a writer. He was kind of pushing for them to get the Godzilla license. He and I had talked a little bit and I told him like, oh man, and, you know, you're a Godzilla fan. We should uh, we should work on a Godzilla comic someday. And apparently he was like, oh, I can't tell them that we're working on getting the license, um, which was really fun. They announced that they had the license at New York Comic Con in 2010, in October. I immediately emailed the editor-in-chief, Chris Ryle, who was the first guy from the company I talked to. And I was like, hey, I'm a big Godzilla fan. And he's like, yeah, man, I know. And uh <laughs> Uh, apparently, Chris Mowry was already planning on asking me to work with them. So that's how it all started. And it was pretty much off to the races from that point. Which one of those comics yeah. was your favorite to work on? Oh, man. I, I like them all from different reasons. That's really hard to say because obviously Rulers of Earth was a tremendous amount of fun to work on. That was the big tamale. But I would say the more concise and some of the one shots I did were actually a lot of fun in their own right. Uh, I think the one that sticks out to me the most was... Rage Across Time because I got to do the whole book in a specific style that I spent months studying and I was able to harness that into the book itself. I personally have a huge soft spot for Rulers of Earth. That's probably my favorite comic to ever be written. I love that. Oh, jeez. I appreciate that. I mean, Chris definitely harnessed a lot of his personal love for the franchise into that. And I was really happy to get to draw all these characters and mm -hmm. all these dream mashups and stuff. And we got to do this really fun, dumb stuff like Jet Jaguar piloting Mechagodzilla. And, uh, <laughs> one of the things in Rulers of Earth 
out of is that we we took some characters that people kind of thought were lame and we tried to make them really awesome like jet jaguar we made oh, yeah. jet jaguar super dope and a really good fighter mm -hmm. and we made king caesar very vicious and very aggressive and that was a lot of fun too man we had a crazy plan for minia for minila too i mean we weren't gonna make minila like his total badass like or anything but we were gonna make him very endearing which is funny because it wound up being very similar to what uh oh, i ripped off my art from akira toriyama that's what uh someone said and uh now that's uh that's canon now uh <laughs> what was i saying uh yeah so anyway um yeah, that, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, I got a lot of fond memories working for IDW on those books. And those books really made my career, so. What's it like running the convention circuit? Like, what's that like? Getting to go to all these conventions all the time, <laughs> selling your art? That's crazy. It's fun. It's a, it, it's fun. You know what it is? It's a double-edged sword, though, because it's a lot of fun to get to travel. Well, it's fun to go to places and to meet people and to have new experiences. The physical act of traveling is not as fun obviously which is funny because now i'm thinking about it and i'm like god it would kill to be on a plane right now you know <laughs> and it's and it's not because there's anything good about it it's just because i just it's because you you want the stuff you can't have yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, up to a point, like uh, up to basically this past year, I was doing like 10 to 12 conventions a year. And I was on the cusp of going to Japan three times a year, which is a lot of fun, but it's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that is that part in a nutshell, really. What's it kind of been like now with the lack of conventions? How are you doing? I know the art community, it seems like it's affected a lot. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, I mean, it's it's not good. I can't remember. Can we curse on this channel? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> you 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 got to try to make chicken salad out of chicken sh**, mm -hmm. as my mom used to say, because uh, my mom is actually works in the convention industry, and their company took a huge hit because of all this, you know, so it's interesting to consider the ramifications of stuff like this. But for example, what it has made me realize is if I'm home, I finally have time to work, you know, because part mm -hmm. of the problem I was having was I wasn't, especially this past year, Red Man Volume 3 actually had to get delayed several times because I was traveling so much. And I finally got just enough time to squeeze in the remaining chapters of Red Man into the third quarter of 2019. But I worked on it so much that I blew my shoulder out. Oh. Um, yeah, it was bad. The way my physical therapist described it, it was because I overworked this one muscle so much that the other muscles in my arms stopped working. Or rather, they couldn't compensate for that muscle being overworked. So I had to start exercising again. I had to do physical therapy. I had to do all this stuff. I'm back up to full strength, or at least I'm back up to not being in constant pain. And uh, and that was a, definitely a wake-up call to how I really needed to manage my work moving forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. That has also made me realize how there are certain conventions that I know I'm always going to want to go to. Like, I'm always going to want to go to G-Fest, which I think is going to be a rager next year. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, I, we're moving to the new convention. Uh, not the convention, so we're moving to the new hotel. And, it's, and people are going to be so desperate to see each other. I'm looking at, like, how, oh, there might not be as many available flights because the airlines are going to have to build their resources back up. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, I will drive. <laughs> I will drive from <laughs> Texas to Chicago if I have to to get to friggin' uh, G-Fest. And there's some other shows that I'm always going to want to go to but I may not do the sheer volume I was doing because I now have, honestly, I'm actually busier than I've ever been because I've started work on a couple of other projects that people were basically waiting for me to have time to work on. That has been a the chicken salad that I found in the chicken shop. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, yeah. uh, a question sent in by the chat here. They donated ass from Extremely Low Budget Productions, who happens to be my brother, asking, Woo! I've been watching a lot of features on comic books lately and would love to know your inspirations for art, comic book, or otherwise also love the energy you're very fun to listen to well i, I appreciate that because uh you're gonna get to listen to me a lot in the uh, commentary track regarding the universe yes <laughs> but we'll talk about that later we'll talk about that later by the way happy belated birthday matt hammond or haman or however you pronounce that uh his birthday was yesterday as far as comics go a lot of my inspiration comes from a lot of people a lot of a lot of godzilla artists like guys like art adams and ricardo delgado and uh, bill stout those were some of my biggest inspirations 
corporations. And of course, I was hugely influenced by manga and anime. But I also, as I got older, I started reading a lot of different comics as well, a lot of American comics. And I found a lot of uh, fun inspiration in that. But yeah, like the big three were guys like Art Adams, Ricardo Delgado, Bill Stout. And of course, there's uh, Shinji Nishikawa, who is, you know, not just a, an inspiration, but also has become a friend and mentor because he's just such a super sweet guy. And I've been very, very fortunate. I've gotten to see him a couple of times in person. That's it. In a nutshell, I'm trying to think of some other artists that I could name drop. Guys like Bob Eggleton and Jeff Rebner, who is a longtime G fan artist. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out. Mm -hmm.